Hey guys, my name is Nick. I'm a Microsoft Certified Expert Administrator. Create a lot of content for MSPs, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to obtain Zero Trust Model with Conditional Access. So, what you see in front of you here is a high-level architecture of Conditional Access. Maybe a lot to take in all at once here, but I promise by the end of this video we'll have a lot better understanding of everything going on here. Today's agenda, I'm going to be going over the licensing requirements for uh, conditional access, going through the shifting landscape to this zero trust model, how we can pitch this to our customers when we want to potentially upgrade them from Office 365 Business Premium to Microsoft 365 Business, for instance, and the technical benefits from an engineering standpoint of being able to better control access to applications without being disruptive to end users. And then I'll be showing you guys, lastly, a just a demo of the policy creation and what that looks like within the Microsoft Admin Center. So to start here, for conditional access, this is some of the basic licensing requirements that you need. Many of you, uh, if you have a silver or gold competency, are familiar with the EMS plus E3, E5 licensing that you get complimentary if you've obtained one of those competencies with Microsoft. EMS plus E3 includes Intune, and it also includes Azure AD P1, which is where conditional access lies. Azure AD P1 and P2 are standalone licenses, $6 for P1 and $9 for P2. M365 Business is one of the newer SKUs from Microsoft, and it is $20 per user per month, but it's got a lot of rich features in it from a security, identity, and productivity standpoint. Lastly, we have the higher level SKUs for M365 E3 E5, and that one is $32 and $64 MSRP respectively. So currently we're shifting into a new landscape where traditionally we've had a uh, perimeter, a trusted perimeter network for accessing company resources. So this is traditional firewall you've set up and we've joined our devices to local AD and we're restricting access to our network. Now employees are shifting into this mentality of being able to work anywhere, anytime, wherever they want, on any device that they want uh, to access that corporate data just to be productive. In addition to that, we're seeing a lot of adoption from third-party SaaS applications to try to enhance their productivity, um, but this can cause a lot of shadow IT in the company. So the landscape is now shifting into the zero trust model where we are using device and user claims to gain access to certain data and resources. And this is really the foundation uh, of which conditional access was built from Microsoft. And it's a very powerful technology too that you can really utilize across your customer base. And the features that are encompassed here, I hope you can use to go in and pitch your customers uh, upgrading from their existing plans to obtain these plans that contain conditional access. So if you're thinking about the benefits of a zero trust model, um, we really want users again to be able to work wherever they want, uh, but we want them to work in a secure manner that also meets certain compliance requirements. So we can determine certain criticality of resources to determine how much of a breach would occur if we had uh, somebody lose access to that device, for instance, or they leave the company and they still have access to company resources. So we begin to look at everything in the landscape as far as um, user roles, as far as um, user identity management, as far as uh, device health, things of that nature, and we can really control access or elevate security based off of uh, the health of the user, the health of the device, or what location they're using to sign in from. We can also prevent uh, network access or lateral movement um, from stolen credentials or compromised device. In this ever-evolving landscape, a lot of BYOD devices, personal cell phones, we're seeing a lot of open airways for attackers to maneuver um, and affect users within a company. But ultimately, as IT professionals, we also want to enable users to be more productive, uh, but also not restrict their workflows. So this is the, the main challenge I feel like that conditional access is solving. So we're, we're looking at conditions as far as an assessment of where users are. And then we are saying these are the access controls. So it's an if-then statement. If these conditions are met, then you have to do this. And we're granting access potentially or blocking access. So some common scenarios that you see here, um, if you're accessing certain cloud applications and you're a part of this group, 
then um, if you're outside the corporate network, then we're going to block access as a common scenario. Or if you're trying to access an app that contains highly sensitive financial data and you're not outside or you're outside of our corporate network, then we're going to block access. The second and third examples that you see here uh, encompass the and or mentality where we can use multiple controls to be able to grant access and that gets even more restrictive with certain applications that we're looking to protect or certain corporate data. So again, same thing, we're outside the corporate network, but this time we want to require MFA and we want to require the device to be compliant under our Intune policies in order for them to gain access. Same thing down below, but this time it's an, it's an or statement, so we can have one or the other met and the user can then gain access. So you're looking at a least restrictive to most restrictive model for a lot of the policies that you'll be creating within conditional access policies themselves. So this is a common business example you can think of. Five end users trying to access the office suite, plus they have a line of business application on premises, and they have a couple of third-party SaaS applications they use like Drop Suite or Dropbox, I should say. Uh, currently, they access all apps on Windows 10 devices joined to their local Active Directory. Um, we don't have any mobile devices, internal IT as an MDM solution, but naturally in this day and age, we're, we're assuming they're accessing the corporate email on the mobile device in the native app um, and potentially storing some sensitive documentation to their Google Drive, the personal Google Drive, um, or their personal, personal Dropbox account or something like that. Um, we also would like them for uh, to be on our network to access certain business critical data that may be intellectual IP, maybe our line of business application here, and we need them uh, to have their device enrolled uh, for the users that are accessing that app to know that the device health is okay and we're not going to be caught with ransomware or malware or anything like that. Uh, for the Office Suite, we want them to be able to access their files on a personal device outside the network, but we want them to be we want to prevent them from downloading and saving those files to an untrusted location like their personal document folder. So a common example, somebody's accessing documentation on their laptop and they're downloading it all locally. So then if the device is lost or stolen or the company or the employee leaves, um, that, that uh, data is exposed. And then lastly here, we have certain apps that contain sensitive company info. We just want additional security by providing MFA if they're not on our corporate network. So when we think about this and we think about implementing uh, these services or trying to sell these services to our customers, we really want to perform an assessment. We want to go in and we want to ask these questions to the business owner or the users across the organization. So who are those users? What kind of rights do they have? We want to move to a, a model of least privilege and we need to know what access they have. What applications are they garnering? Um, what applications do they store corporate data? Who are they and what groups are they in? Next, we need to look at what all apps are being used for accessing, processing, and storing data. Um, so the, these apps themselves, you want to take an inventory of, and you want to understand which ones contain um, highly critical data to the business that might um, really, really degrade the integrity of the business if it was to be compromised. Um, third question there is how are they accessing those apps? Uh, so is this on personal devices? Is this on their mobile phones? Um, are they accessing these applications off the corporate network? Are they accessing them on untrusted networks like uh, Starbucks Wi-Fi, for instance? So great questions there. Are, they, are their devices managed by IT? So is this a case where it's all BYOD, they're accessing their mail on the native mail app? Um, are they accessing highly critical data on uh, devices that don't have your AV pushed out to it, for instance, something like that? And then these last two questions really encompass all the above. So you as the IT professional are defining what conditions are required in order to access corporate data, corporate resources there. So you're saying, hey, if you're off my network and you're not using an untrusted or you're using a device that's not enrolled in my MDM solution, then you can't have access to these three applications because they contain business critical data. Um, and those scenarios could go on and on, but that's a, a clear example of what we mean there. And then what controls are required based off the condition? So it's saying, hey, these are the, this is the scenario. Um, you have a user, they're not on the network, they're using an untrusted device, they're accessing Dropbox. 
Um, so are you going to grant them access, yes or no? And if so, uh, what level of access? Uh, and are you going to require any additional security by saying, hey, use MFA, make this a trusted device, make it a healthy device, something like that. So in asking these questions and doing this assessment with your customer, this is where you garner your pitch of where they're exposed, um, one from a security perspective, but also from a compliance perspective, from PII leaking or something of that nature. And this makes this product or, or upgrade if, to this licensing that you saw a lot easier of a sell. So some of these policies I recommend for our MSPs that you can implement um, to perform a zero trust model there uh, really puts into perspective the fact that we're using a trusted location as our basis and then kind of branching out from there. So the big one uh, that I think Intune addresses with its mobile application management policies that you can use is the protection of trusted apps on mobile devices. So these devices don't have to be enrolled in your MDM solution, but the actual app data is protected by you and can be wiped by you when a user goes in to try to access that data at all. So a common example I can give is somebody accessing the native mail app on their Android device. They type in their credentials. Um, because we have an app protection policy, it redirects them to download a trusted app from the Google Play Store, which is Outlook. And then they sign into Outlook and you can require them to put in a pin as well too for a, an additional security feature. And uh, then when that company or when that user potentially leaves the company or um, their device is lost or stolen, you can do a remote wipe and wipe all the data off. So that's a great example of the power of this technology where um, traditionally, we're, you know, th these are controls you're putting in place that are becoming more and more important as users begin to work from anywhere at any time. Um, so some of these other ones you can read through there, but uh, there's a lot of different features that you can get into um, from the standpoint of blocking downloads and um, blocking legacy authentication, things like that. So from a demo perspective, I just wanted to pop into the uh, conditional access policy page here. This is within the M365 uh, business tenant that we have here. And here you see I've created some uh, policies that I referenced there on that page. But I just want to give you a visual of what this actually looks like. So within here, you can create a new policy. You can name it whatever you like. These are your conditions up top. You say assignments, you're defining what conditions are being met. And then based off this condition, you're saying these are the controls we need in place. So are you going to grant or block access? And if you're granting it, what requirements are needing to be met? That could be anything as far as not checking anything. It could be MFA. And as you see down below, this is our and or statement. So we're saying require all or require one. So you can really get as grand as you like with these policies. Um, and you can go ahead and scope them certain users, scope them to certain applications, certain devices. So it can really get as, as restrictive as you want, but it gives us the flexibility um, to say that we're in a zero trust network uh, because we have all these controls in place. Report only is great for technicians and implementing these policies because you can um, track the audit trail of when these policies are triggered without anything actually happening. So it's a great time to turn things on for your customers, see how many uh, times the policy triggers. Maybe there's something that you weren't aware of, um, but it was good that you track that first before implementing it and getting blown up because you turn something off or block their access to something where um, they do a lot of business out of that you didn't understand. Um, this is only available, by the way, with Azure AD P1, so keep that in mind. So how do you pitch this to your customers? I think uh, compliance and security is really the biggest two uh, factors that you need to take into place. Keep this messaging short, keep it uh, in line with what we're mentioning here as far as the shifting landscape. Ask them certain questions about uh, their end users having access to data on untrusted devices. Um, ask them about business critical applications potentially being exposed to the outside world, intellectual IP. Uh, what would they do? What would be the financial impact of that? Um, bigger one, though, is obviously the compliance, because if they do get audited, there could be some heavy fines. And it's great to do your research on those certain requirements and, and uh, help the customer out with that, but also put a little bit of uh, pressure on them by showing them how much they could get fined, because 
PII is leaking out into these, uh, you know, personal cell phones, or um, there's a potential breach because anybody could obviously download some highly classified corporate data to their personal device. So um, this is something where you want to put these things in place. And lastly, uh, what is the policy around third-party applications and onboarding those? Because there's a lot of shout out to IT going on where, um, you know, people are onboarding many SaaS apps just because they think they're going to help them in certain ways. Um, so performing that assessment is really where, where you can you can thrive as far as giving a delivered pitch to your customer. And this may be something where you come to the plate with a um, predefined list of what you feel like they're exposed in. And this is probably going to be a central theme around a lot of your customers. They're going to be exposed in many similar ways. And then you can ask them more questions to dive a little bit deeper and address you know some of the scenarios. So from the technician standpoint, um, you know, the, the overall arching goal of this is really to give them that freedom and flexibility to work whenever they want, wherever they want, but also restrict their access to certain corporate data, um, depending on if the device is compromised um, or the user's identity is compromised or they're not on your trusted network, something like that. Um, you can reduce your help desk calls for people who can't sign into their account based off of them not being on the corporate network anymore, based off of you adding apps for single sign-on where they don't have to maintain passwords. So it can get easier and easier um, for both sides of the, of the, the puzzle here. Um, so we can test the policies, we can, we can gauge interest without actually having to engage anybody at the uh, company themselves. So that's great to track that without having to fully get into pilot users, but I do recommend that as well. And then you can manage the shadow IT. So if they onboard an application, they'll need to have a formal process for doing so and notifying you um, because they won't be able to access it with corporate data or save corporate data into these locations if you've set all the policies up correctly. So if we look back to our business case here um, that we mentioned, we have five end users trying to access the Office Suite plus LOB. Um, we can create an app protection policy for Windows, Android, and iOS. We add the entire Office Suite to the policies in their Dropbox account. So then that way they can't cut, copy, paste out of these applications. They can't save them to untrusted locations like their personal OneDrive. Um, so we solve a lot of those problems there. Currently access all their apps on Windows 10, join the Active Directory. They don't have a policy for mobile devices. Um, we create a conditional access policy strict corporate data to only apps with app protection policies. So that solves that issue there. Um, we have uh, the network to access the LOB app, and we need to know that it's enrolled in Intune to access it. Um, so we create a conditional access policy here to require the users to be on your trusted network and have a compliant device enrolled into Wint Intune to access that as well too. So you know the device is healthy. Um, for the Office Suite, we want them to be able to access their files on a personal device outside the network. Um, we prevent downloading or saving of these files. Um, so this is where, again, we get into um, this policy as well too here, um, as well as a conditional access policy that we can use to restrict the download of Excel, Word documents to their, their personal devices. And then for certain apps to have sensitive company info, we want them to use MFA. Uh, you create a conditional access policy to require MFA on certain applications when their users are not lo located on your network. So basic policies there that you can create, um, but it does provide a huge amount of value, uh, not only to you, and it shows your, your managed services offering is, is um, a lot more powerful just based off of these controls being in place. Um, so you can provide a lot for your customer in this manner. And this is how I would approach the upgrade talk when you're thinking about moving them from a $1,250 price point of business premium to M365 business. That's everything I had for you guys. If you have any questions about the Zero Trust Network with conditional access, please comment below.